all welcome to our podcast on the topic surrounding spirituality i am nupur and i have with me arvind and ankur arvind and i will be host for today's session and we have our guest ankur ankur is a tech entrepreneur with hands on experience on software development side some time back ankur embarked on the transformative journey of self discovery through a 7 month intensive residential yoga and spiritual program so we will hear about ankur's experience in today's podcast ankur welcome to the podcast uh, namaskaram ankur namaskaram arvind let's first start with discussing what spirituality means to us arvind do you like to start uh, yeah spirituality is a bigger subject for me uh, i could say that spirituality is a union of uh, the soul with the higher soul so there is a higher dimension which i believe this is exist beyond this human body and form uh, so ultimate goal of spirituality for my side would be uh, to have a union of my soul to the higher soul what about you ankur uh spirituality i i think what i have understood over time that it's a very relative concept for a lot lot of different people and uh, at isha what we actually work on in a spiritual aspect is mostly related to uh, deepening your perception of life and be as close as to the existence and that's what the spiritual dimension means at least from my understanding i completely agree for me it's about seeking a deeper understanding of ourselves and our connection to something greater than us it has helped me in all, all walks of life to cultivate self awareness and find inner peace admit the chaos of everyday life and to understand the deeper meaning of life and essence of our being also there is no right and wrong way to be spiritual it's about finding the practices and philosophies that nourish one's soul and help one grow spiritually well it was great to hear different perspective uh, thanks nupur for your insight as well ankur uh, going forward with the podcast uh, so we'd like to hear from your experience uh, the key insight and transformation that you experienced during the 7 months intensive residential yoga and spiritual program will give us some insight on how the program was all about and what have you learned and how did it change your life uh, all right so i think to start uh, like what is the program is all about right so <laughs> so it start with the simple application process where a lot of people apply and uh, i think over 1400 people eventually joined the program uh, so on day one we started with a basic initiation and basic understanding what the program is all about so what we actually work on we see uh, Uh, as a individual into as four dimensions and uh, first is body then mind then emotion and then your life energies which is also called pranas so the the whole seven month is divided uh, to complete focus on these four aspects and uh, keep enhancing uh, keep deepening your understanding about these aspects and keep making growth in these four aspects which overall bring the overall growth uh, as a life and uh, key insights that at least i have uh, like that i have experienced right like uh, a lot of misunderstanding that has been implement like has been there for me uh, been brought up in a religious and different context right lot of things that you gather which you think is reality but as you go start going deeper and deeper and deeper a lot of those uh, things will dissolve a lot of those things will go away you actually see life as it is and uh, along with it there are a lot of things that will come to your experience so to explain this uh, in a very logical way uh, the fourth dimension that i mentioned about is uh, is called life energies so with lot of yoga and practices like from pranayam to hatha yoga and different aspect of ashtang yoga uh, as we pr- uh, keep doing them on a da- roli- r- daily routine basis the basic prana in the system start rising as the prana start rising in the system a lot of uh, 
possibilities open up within your own, own system and a lot of things will come to experience this is the gist of uh, the whole uh, thing that we did at isha oh indeed that was wonderful to listen and i could imagine that would have been a wonderful experience uh, you also mentioned uncle there were like 1400 volunteers who were signed up for this program and you also spoke about some phone dimension uh, and prana and the yoga astang yoga and hatha yoga as you mentioned earlier so i'm pretty much sure that was a beautiful experience for being there for 7 months it's, it's a very intensive course and uh, i'm sure you have learned a lot uh, would you be able to give us some uh, insight on how volunteering these different programs have shaped your understanding of human existence and personal growth uh, because mo- most of us are uh in in the world today's world we are looking for personal growth and personal development so would you be able to give some insight on th- that front sure that that's a very excellent question i failed to mention the volunteering part of this program so our day was break into uh, two main aspects one is uh, the seva part and other is the sadhana part so they start with the sadhana four five hours of sadhana it's we have to do in the early morning then the seva time starts and then uh evening time we again has some sadhana time a uh, couple of hours and then we again go for seva and then finally we uh, rest for the day so seva and sadhana mixture is a very integral part of this program and uh, seva is same as volunteering by the way and uh, how does it seva help is something even i was not very clear before i joined the program but seva is very clearly help Uh, one to help basically to break the limitations that one has actually gathered so so for example if you are doing your own sadhana you most of the time you are sitting alone or doing let's say hatha yoga or doing your pranayam or meditation right so this actually help you raise your pranic energy in the system and lot of other things as well but when it comes to seva seva actually you have to deal with people around you in the real time situations this is a uh, this is in a way is a testing ground for your sadhana at the same time uh, there we have to volunteer in a lot of different kind of programs throughout the seven month duration so we have volunteered you know like when there a lot of uh, isha offered a lot of programs from business to spiritual to a lot of people around the world so we have to volunteer in various different kind of programs we have to even volunteer as part of our uh, curriculum we have something called pranadanam where we serve food to uh, over 4 5000 people who are coming and eating there every day and uh, also there is another program called uh, linga seva uh, where uh, we have to serve time uh, in the temples uh, from taking care of every single aspect of a visitor experience who is actually coming and visiting the temple and uh, so this and spending the time in consecrated spaces so these all aspects mostly uh first thing is def- as i mentioned is, is a open up uh, various different possibilities which help us break the limitations that we are holding on to once this limitation get breached uh, our sadhana help us to level up uh, our uh, threshold to the next level and uh, uh, the seva itself keep help us keep breaking new and new and limitations every day basically so this is a very powerful mix overall which help uh, for spiritual growth and personal growth along with it a related question uh, ankur was there any challenges for you to adapt to the situation initially as uh, you just went uh, through this program yes yes actually so the routine is very intense there is no holidays it's a seven day pro- seven day a week program and you start early as 4 am 4:30 or 4ish in the morning and you get to bed by 10 pm and you are on and on and on there is no breaks in between you have to take care of uh, your uh, even washing your clothes for food you have to walk 2 uh, uh, kilometers back and forth every day so on an average one has to walk around 8 9 kilometers a day and uh, back to back everything is runs by clock so you have to be there as per the schedule there's a fixed schedule and uh, if you are late do- doors are closed most of the time and uh, so everything's you know like it's it's just one you're jumping between one thing to the other thing and other to the next thing the whole and there's no holidays in between so 
that itself is a very challenge to in a, in a routine like that and it's very physically challenging at times as well because if you are going to a volunteering program you don't know when you're going to hit bed and back to back you have to do so many so many things even for example uh, we have a department uh, in isha which is akshya which uh, which feed 12000 people on an average meals like which 12000 uh, meals a day they cook and even if there's a let's say a chapati is there on the menu right so there are many volunteers just sitting and counting chapatis they make uh, more than 15000 chapatis a day in those kind of days so it's the simplest ta- task is just counting chapati but, but when it happens at scale right it's a very different ball game altogether so s- s- there are very simple simple things but at scale that has been the always a challenge at working at isha and volunteering at isha so less yes yeah just, just to add few few insight from my side ankur because you and mentioned about seva and sadhana it reminds me of this uh, eight limbs of hatha yoga which says yama and yama so yama is equivalent to seva where you serve the world around you and yama is uh, equivalent to sadhana from your de- definition where you're serving your inner growth right so that's really coinciding with uh, the two limbs of hatha yoga from my perspective that's wonderful to hear Yeah. Uh, one more uh, related question ankur how do you continue uh, to follow that practices after coming out of that program and as far as i know you continue to volunteer for some of the activities how uh, do you find those now uh so i think one of the reasons for me to go to the program is that actually i was not able to uh, do practices after i have done some programs so i understand that challenge very well uh, i think even i understand the question very well for the same reason so uh, i think uh, spending time there at isha the idea is to actually incorporate a lot of these things into a da- daily routine and at the same time uh, keep while uh, i was there for 8 months uh, i have been doing this uh, these things on a daily basis in my experience uh, earlier what used to happen if you do your sadhana for a few days you you go few step ahead if you don't do it for a few days you again come back to the same point so there's a lot of back and forth but when i was was at isha for 8 months i'm doing this on a daily basis because the time has been dedicatedly allocated to me to do it so every day even i'm moving a very little forward step uh, but just the persistence of it and the support that they have offered there is actually very phenomenal that you won't miss your sadhana sadhana is the first priority there just because of that uh, over 8 months even you walk a little you actually covered good enough ground you have made good enough progress in the forward direction and uh, that once that is come to your experience and you are even there is something called uh, mandala right this and habit formation so these things have become part of the habit now so once these things have happened now doing sadhana on a regular basis it's not that big as a, as a challenge you may not able to do everything but definitely you are spending more than 2 3 hours a day to do your yoga and meditation so that itself is a very powerful uh, you know like a change that has happened in my life definitely i could agree and even if somebody does certain things for a couple of months that comes into the habit and uh, when you try to uh get out of it it takes time and so it becomes habit and then uh, you just take that as habit and continue to do it but uh one uh, question uh, so what difference you find now is it that when you do uh, practices now you are able to do other things in your life say your work or other aspects of life in a better manner is yes, uh, fundamentally there are lot of changes which uh, will be hard for me to explain each one point by point but just to uh, uh, start from a very simple summary uh, the friction in the system goes down at every level uh, for example your body is much more active and fluid your mind is very much into balance you're not very easily distracted you're more focused you're more uh you know like uh, like mental diarrhea is not going on in your head you are just uh you know very alert and uh, 
you are not throughout the day you know like uh, distracted by various different thoughts and all your compulsiveness goes down a lot uh your uh, sleep uh, quality has enhanced a lot your sleeping hours also reduce so these are the whole systemic level changes your energy of the system the basic pranas in the systems are very high that give you access to a lot of other things you can some of the practices you can even heal yourself you don't get sick very often or the recovery is very good even you get sick so these are the very few simplest things that uh, Uh, you one can experience and at the same time if i am visiting uh, any place i can feel the energy of the place which earlier was not very common even i'm living in mountains you don't get very much affected by cold or very much affected by heat as well that also kind of these kind of things comes to your system so there's a long list of things that actually happen your whole system start evolving from where you were to to the next levels altogether do you have answered partly this question but i would still like to ask the question how do you merge your technical expertise with your spiritual journey are there any connections or overlap between the two so uh see i think end of the day you born as a life and uh, everything uh, in a life you need to take risk and you have to keep moving ahead you don't know what is the future and uh, i think the we always get stuck in the past and the future and one thing even with the professional life as well right uh, these days it's very easily to have a very uh, like a very pressure related life i am usually into tech and startups so it's very easy to juggle between too many things even in spiritual dimension you are definitely juggling many things in some ways right you are doing your practices you are doing your sadhana seva you are managing your family relationships everything right so uh, combining these all things i think the fundamental idea is to have that balance in your system so you can do everything all together even your work is your sadhana even it's not very different if you do it with a certain level of awareness even your even you writing your code or designing your next startup it's it's the same thing it doesn't matter what's the nature of your work is so that way i kind of correlate these two, these two things like this is one of the same thing there's no difference there for me yeah indeed though i can completely agree this uh, following bits of spirituality not into as depth in depth as you are has also helped me to create a extent of by recognizing the connection and overlap between this friends individual can definitely harness the power of both domains to foster personal growth innovation and well-being or when you would like to add something uh no definitely i mean um uh, it's good to hear from ankur uh, all the insight what he has presented because i am also in this path but not have not taken any course uh, as ankur has already done but then i mean it's part for uh, for uh, for a year now so i can echo resonate with what ankur says um, to a great extent uh, but a lovely insight from ankur yeah indeed moving to the uh, next question with your professional experience ankur what advice you would give to aspiring entrepreneurs and professional in balancing their professional aspiration with the personal growth and self discovery phase uh okay so uh, to answer this uh, one thing if i summarize the whole experience uh that would be is is about perception and receptivity so end of the day even you spend a second uh, the deeper you perceive in that second the, the more receptive you are the more you perceive basically so even as a individual life or a professional life or whichever way you want to see it the more you perceive the more you the more deeper you understand any situation and the better is res- better response you can generate for it so perception is the baseline of life if you have a deeper perception you can see things which other may not be able to see and you will reduce your time in doing things that you are not supposed to do or that will not deliver output for you so one single advice 
for everyone is just work on the perception part or whatever you want to do in life because if your perception is keep deepening up whatever you do will start its showing results much faster and less wastage of life and time arvind what uh, do you have to say uh, i have one question on this because uh, ankur mentioned a very important uh, aspect uh, perception and i completely agree with him because uh, your your perseverance increases your clarity increases and the focus increases and so and so it's a dominant effect as you go on and life also become a lot shorter uh, ankur i would like to know um, see not everybody has the privilege to have an uh, intensive program as you did right so maybe there are a lot of other reasons they cannot uh, could you help us understand our viewers understand how do we increase this perseverance or perception uh what could one do uh, in their daily life to increase it because in the world of social media and distraction uh and so impulsive uh you know we have uh, actions around us so it's very difficult to focus even for a minute uh, and looking at young generation they're already bombarded with a lot of social media content so could you give us some hands on experience or ideas on how one can cultivate uh this perception or deepening of the perception as you mentioned earlier uh uh arun that's a very good question uh so see i think i would always recommend to bring a practice to your day to day life mm-hmm. even you are doing a 20 or 30 minute practice on a daily or a spiritual practice or a yogic practice to your life once you do that uh, it will naturally bring that kind of aspect to your life persistence even a 30 minute practice a day if you persist to it it will deliver so much level of perception and depth to your life for example isha's inner engineering program is a very good example one can choose whichever program they have access to or which one whoever the guru they actually feel that is more suited for them there is no distinction every other guru has given one practices if you start with it will definitely will add your value if a, if a, there are lot of different kind of tools offered by every other guru on the planet so it's important to find one and bring it to your life whatever you do most people actually say i don't have time for this and i think i would like to address that if you pick up practice you will save time because that will reduce your sleeping hours that will increase your performance that will in- increase your recovery everything it will save time for you in the life so yeah. that is one thing once you bring that practice another thing you can do is paying attention to everything whatever you do just pay attention don't make conclusions about anything that you know that you have been into your experience but still don't make conclusions about it because it's always keep evolving so two things one bring some practice to your life and second thing is keep paying attention and don't make conclusions about it oh, we are living in a very insight. evolving and this is uh, very insightful i could say that uh, initially i used to be very impatient uh, but going into spirituality has taught me also uh, to be calm in different situation and to react less to what's happening around yeah thanks ankur i mean uh, one other thing which i wanted to you to uh, uh, mention is uh, how do you also mention that there are a lot of gurus and a lot of uh, programs which are offered in the world and right? there are thousands of it and you have zen yoga you have uh, buddhism you have jainism and then you have art of living you have isha foundation and so on and so forth so during this process uh, of self discovery one might land up into one of those uh, uh, institution right but then few of uh, many of the people are not convinced some of them will say okay i want to try myself what advice would you like to give the people who don't want to go into one uh, institution or for that matter so one guru for that matter and wants to practice by themselves uh how do they start and uh, i know you rem- uh, you mentioned about persistence and consistency that's true but what recommendation would you give like meditate for 5 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day do some hatha yoga pranayama what advice would you give um uh, so i think uh, finding this self path is difficult and that's why there's a need for guru so personally i would suggest to always keep experimenting with the different kind of gurus what they are saying and see whether it's working for you or not 
it's mm-hmm. not about even uh, people say they want to follow science and everything it's the very same fundamental it's not different in any way because you are trusting as hands out of people and you are following that trajectory so even following a yogic guru or a guru in this these kind of aspects it's the same thing uh, don't trust anyone even don't trust your science you just experiment and see what works for you and what or what doesn't work for you accordingly you take the next step for you that's mm-hmm. that's uh, that's the only strategy that at least i have found in my life useful yeah that's just so nice so insightful because this is this is just not true in spirituality but also in life as well uh one need to experiment travel the path and then decide for himself or herself what works for them uh that's wonderful uh, insight now go thank you so much for that thanks ankur for your time thanks all for listening us until next time <laughs>